to Akira trying to defend and maybe take this to a game four or five. Eterna, can they do it? That's the question. The odds are stacked against them this time. And even looking at the drafts, Blacklist have drafted themselves in a way that they are so sustainable, right? They have the AoE healing coming in from Oh My Venus as well as, wait a second here, Sagan gonna get caught really low. And this is scary, right? Because we need the Xavier to be able to scale with the Clock of Destiny and the Lightning Truncheon as well. And if that doesn't happen, I'm doubting if RQ Akira have enough damage to penetrate through the healing coming in from Oh My Venus as well as that extra HP from the Faramis. Yeah, already Blacklist being very aggressive. And it's almost surprising because you see the Estes and you expect there not to be too much, but they're just so good. They have so much faith in Oh My Venus that they're willing to just push forward and get as much damage in that mid lane as possible. Now, Edward and Takashi also having this faded anime battle as Naisu predicted. Definitely very intense, but possible action up in the top side. Naisu, how do you feel about that matchup? Well, overall, I mean, it, it's really, I don't expect anyone to go down before that first turtle anyway, but uh, I mean, we didn't even get a chance to talk about the box show pick, right, that much, because King rolling with this option here. Rolling. Literally, literally. <laughs> pun intended. Uh, the thing is, is we haven't seen Boxer too much, but it's still a great utility tank jungler here. But already, you know, Luis doesn't have that way the dragon, but should be able to get out just fine. And that's the thing, right? It's wise that is going to be playing that Valentina like we saw here. And now you have that option, that dynamic. What ultimates do we take? How do we use it? Turtle coming up here in just a couple seconds. Let's see how this all plays out here. We'll see exactly how this pans out. Remember, RQ Brazil, they need Sagan to get that level four, which he hasn't, but Takashi here already. Oh, they're gonna crash down on Wise. They already get the Cold Altar out here, but it's a first blood for Takashi. Able to secure himself, the first one. Now Edward gonna be the focus, has to get back to the turret. And this could be the first turtle going in the hands of RRQ Akira. Oh my Venus there, trying to get some vision available, but look oh. at the first! Takashi comes in, able to grab another. A very, very nice start for RRQ Brazil. I was a little bit worried, but it seems like they have come online at two minutes and 40 seconds. If they can hold this together, then maybe they could take this to a possible win. But remember, they started last game strong. Now, with some of these items, how are you feeling about it, Eterna? Nothing just too fancy just yet. We're not at that point where anyone has built that first item, but you can see that the Boxia is going to have a huge impact in that early game, right? He's going towards a lot of items that are going to be able to make him more sustainable in his team fights. But talking about team fights, oh. Luis goes in. Luis able to take down Oh My Venus, and now they're going to be focusing on Haji here. He's trying to get out, had to use that Purify as well. Purifies out of it and lives to fight another day. So right there with the Basha, we're already starting to see with that uh, tortoise poisons, with that ultimate, I love the name Tongue of that twister. ultimate, by the way. <laughs> um, it's, it's a way to kind of counter the Estes because of that constant DPS damage over time without relying on the CC that they try to do in game one. So once again, RQ Brazil finding answers elsewhere on the map. Another big dis difference now with this game and last game is they had a bit of a lead in aggression early on, but they didn't have much of a gold lead. This time, Brazil not only leading in kills and map control, but also holding a decent gold lead in the game. Another thing about the Boxia is that he's so mobile, right? He can go on every point of the map really quickly, and that's why we're seeing that they're leading in that rotation. And right now you can see even him, he's trying to penetrate into the jungle of Blacklist, trying to pressure out Wise here, who is kind of falling far behind here. Wise still level six, as compared to King, who is level seven. I mean, he's doing a great job, right? King uh, knows the lead that he has, knows the mobility advantage that he has as well, and he's playing around that. That's exactly what RQ Akira needs to do here. This is the refined version, or at least play style, that they went with and that they're executing really well. Could it convert into another objective take for them? But you can already see Blacklist International trying to get a position here for this second turtle of the game. And now it's going to be pulled out. Still, there's King. I was waiting for him to roll up here. Finds Haji, forces him back. Takashi quite low. Bravest fighter in. Luis, though, with the way of the dragon. Oh, my Venus has to pop the heel. Able to survive a little bit longer, but it's going to be the turtle secured for Gusa Lagusta and in the mid lane. Still going at it, looking for Haji. Oh. Sagan falls, but he gets punished as well. Two down for Blacklist International. That is a good, good trade, though. 
I mean, two for one, plus the turtle in the hands of Brazil here. I think they were listening to you, Eterna, because they have been focusing hard on Venus. In literally the first few minutes, two kills on a Venus. This is going to slow them down so much. And Blacklist, for the first time in three games, fallen behind. Oh, but right now, if we're taking a look at the items here in the fifth minute, we see that Claude already built up his DHS, oh. but Louise, man, oh man. As aggressive as he can be at the moment, and you just saw Oheb secure that BOD. So DHS versus BOD, it seems like Oheb has actually reached that power spike a little bit earlier, since of course Gusta La Gusta is still waiting on that golden staff. Which means when they go in for 5v5, Blacklist might have the better upper hand if they play the team fight a little bit better and try shut down Louise from taking out all my Venus in the back line. Yeah, I think this is the first time we've really seen Louise feel comfortable while playing along with Takashi, right? At least in the knockout stage, both of them just having fun with this. Not only that, another big thing to point out, that gold lane tower is gone. And this is exactly what Gusta La Gusta wants. The only downfall, the only worry I have on my mind for Brazil right now is once again, no kills on Oheb. And I'm pretty sure he's already got that bot locked in. He's got the boots locked in. He's going to start dealing some damage if he gets involved into these fights, which will look at him already into the mid lane. Look at here so, on the bottom side, ooh. Edward using the Electro Final Blow to get out of there. But, you know, Takashi's doing work here for RQ Akira. It's 3K gold lead at this point in the game, at almost the seven minute mark. Next turtle is going to be up here in just a second, and RQ Akira is in a great position to contest it as they focus on Oh My Venus. Dawning Light going to miss just barely here by an edge. And now it's Edward going in. There's the Colts also oh. to respond. The kick comes out. Nobody going down just yet. RRQ Akira running. It's Saigon that falls under the turret. Oh man, with one member down, now Blacklist, they're gonna have the upper hand when it comes down to this neutral objective tank. They're gonna get that turtle for free, and they're gonna be able to push the limits a bit more. RQ Brazil, though, they're still leading, but look at how aggressive they start to go in that top side. Gusta Gusta forced to retreat as of right now, as in the bottom side. Wow, Takashi and Edward still going out here in the bottom side, holding on to that turret half health here. The enemy battle continues. Takashi looking to get in position. Just going to focus on the turret. Can't get it, though, as the last minion goes down there. So still a back and forth. But Black International lessening the gold lead from RQ Akira. Yeah, it all it took was a second, and this is what Blacklist is known for, the rubber band right around that mid-game power spike. Now it seems like the sustainability is coming in check. I mean, you have the Estes, plus you have the Sparamies, and as we saw earlier, RQ Brazil brought out all the guns. They brought out everything they could in that mid-lane skirmish and just didn't put a dent into Blacklist. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with these items. I mean, to be honest, RQ Brazil, they really need this Claude to start popping off because if we take a look at that gold gap, it's quite evident, right? He is trying to get that cross corrosion scythe with the Swift crossbow, but I'm wondering if it's gonna pop up fast enough and if the damage is gonna be enough because once again, I'm still doubting. I mean, I'm still very concerned of how sustainable Blacklist is going to be, especially now that we see that RQ Brazil, they haven't had any chance to pick up an anti-region item. I mean, but Brazil is still being proactive on the map right now, still being aggressive. They've taken another tower in the gold side, and Blacklist, on the other hand, has only taken one from Brazil. Now, Turtle is going to be, no, Ward will be up in just very soon. So if Brazil can possibly secure this ne next major huge objective, it could help some secure this mid game, but it's definitely not gonna be easy. The gold has led up a little bit in the hands of Brazil. Now, I'm feeling good about it. I'm hoping Brazil can bring us to another game, but it's definitely not gonna be easy. Yeah, I mean, they're in a good position here, and that's why they're gonna go ahead and start up the Lord Dance. Wise holding on to that way of the dragon here, I don't think anyone's going to commit just yet here, but on the bottom side, it looks like Oheb was oh. going to be the focus, but already, look at that. The damage is there. Gusa Lugusa going to have to go back here. And still, it's a little bit of a dicey situation for RQ Akira. And at this point, they have been putting pressure around the map, opening it up for themselves, but I don't think they're still in a comfortable, comfortable position to actually fight this Lord just off the bat. They've got to still handle the sustain coming out. Yes, you have the box, you have the passive for you, but it's going to be up to Luis here as he goes in with a conceal. Looking for the bottom side. Can't get Haji, though. They are chunked quite low. 
Cold Alt are still gonna be hold on. It's committed now. Oh my oh. Venus getting slammed down. Takashi goes in for another kill here. They're gonna back off. They have the numbers advantage. Edward taking out Luis though. Haji still up as well. RQ, RQ Akira. Do they press the situation? It's a one for one trade here. It's gonna be dicey. King though trying to decide if they want to go oh. for it. Kusaka Gusa opens up his ultimate here as oh. OM. Oh! Nice pick up there from Gusa Lagusta. Able to grab the kill, but is it still? That's the question. Wise is still there. This is not a green light just yet to start the Lord, but Wise can he focus up by Takashi again. One versus four here in the bush. Gonna get dragged back a little bit. Takashi oh no. can't survive that as Haji grabs the kill. Killing spree. Meanwhile, Araku Kira still worked on the Lord here. Dawning Light comes out, Wise quite low, took the bravest fighter. Now Edward trying to get some vision, an angle if he can. Gusa Lagusa though, gonna push him back here. Still the okay. fight for the Lord, Edward goes down. Kobolder comes out, Wise. it's Wise with the Lord again. How does he do it? But RRQ Akira gonna push them back. Everybody quite Whoa. low, Saigon with a huge mystic field. I mean, <laughs> win or lose here, that was one intense wow. Lord fight. And I like the fact that Brazil didn't force that Lord fight. They did lose out on the Lord, but overall, they're still kind of controlling the map here. They take another, they take another tower. Now, quick second, because Oheb's Beatrix has picked up eight games in M, has been picked eight games in M3 with an 87.5% win rate. You match that up with the Estes win rate from earlier for Venus, and it is definitely spelling out for trouble, Eterna. Oh, 100%. I mean, we're seeing the Filipino sniper himself go into action. I mean, need we remind you that he was the MVP of M3 Finals, right? And he even was able to pick out a skin for M3. So coming into this game, I'm not really sure if RQ Brazil want to do that same thing that they did. That fight was a little too prolonged. And when it gets prolonged like that, it feels like Blacklist has the upper hand because of the constant healing that is happening by Oh My Venus. Take him out, great, but you have to go in, try burst him down. But Haji, he goes wow. into the front line, deals a little bit of damage, but this is all allowing Blacklist to push that tempo as well as to zone away the members of RQ Brazil. Well, they're still gonna be working on this tier two here. They might just be able to get it cleanly as they do. Downing Light comes out. No one gonna go down though, but Map advantage is what Blacklist and the Blacklist International wants here. Takashi going again and again. There's the Blessing of the Moon, oh. guys. They find Oheb. And now it's Oh My Venus on the focus here. Haji gonna be Haji. in a bad position. Donning Light comes out. It's another that falls. Luis. Luis with a massive way of the dragon. Finding Wise, and it's Edward in trouble now. RRQ Akira marching down the mid lane. Totally taking out Blacklist International. That is insane, and they want to keep going. Takashi with that dive forward, taking care of these towers, pushing forward. Are we going to see a game four? Brazil trying. Brazil going to push in. Haji holding on for dear life here. They've got the minion waves. It's only a couple seconds, and RRQ Akira is going to do it. They extend the series as they take game number three. RQ Akira coming back, rising from the ashes, and proving that the L is not for lose, but it is for learn. 